Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, wishing you all a blessed New Year 2022. May the Lord bless each one of you and uh, continue to use each of you uh, greatly for his kingdom. Uh, so it's wonderful. Welcome back. It's good to be back uh, for a new semester. Uh, all right, so this semester, uh, we'll be going through the course, the covenants, the cross, uh, and the blood. And uh, it's a powerful uh, uh, you know, course where we can learn a lot of insights on covenants, uh, what the Lord Jesus did for us on the cross, and also uh, what the blood of Jesus does for us uh, even now in each of our lives. So excited for this course. Uh, the PDF for uh, this course, uh, the document, the course notes have, have been uploaded, uh, so you can feel free to download them. And even as we uh, go along in this class, you can, you know, if you have questions too, you can track along. Uh, feel free to post your questions, or you can even uh, stop me anytime, ask questions uh, as we continue on with this course. All right, so shall we begin this course? Uh, everyone okay? Everyone ready? All right. All right. Uh, can one of us please lead us in prayer? Let's just surrender this entire semester and this course, especially into God's hand. Let's pray that the Lord uh, will give us wisdom. The Holy Spirit will minister to each of us. Uh, you know, the whole point of uh, going through this course is uh, it's not just to finish, okay, second semester, but the point is to gain something uh, in our spirit that we may be used for, our, for the glory of God's kingdom. So uh, let's pray. Uh, one of us, please lead us in prayer. Maybe John, uh, if you're there can you please lead us let's pray yeah thank you father we want to thank you for this time lord we humble ourselves once again to your presence and as we are starting off with this course oh god we pray that you would continue to impart your revelation to us and we would be able to understand the mysteries of your word help us to be deeply rooted and securely grounded in your love and as we learn this course, oh God, we pray that you would minister to us and we would we would have a thorough knowledge of what you have finished in the cross for us, God. We thank you, Lord. We submit uh, Pastor Paul to your hands and ask for your grace to be with him, yeah. to teach the entire course, oh God. And we pray yeah. for each of us as students, we pray that, oh God, we would have a clear understanding of what you are teaching us, Lord God. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, John. All right. So let's begin with uh, the covenants. Uh, let me just present the notes so that we can all also take a look at that. Just a moment, please. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to pull up the notes. Okay. Uh, for some reason, uh, the notes are, uh, my PDF is not showing on the stream. 
Uh, I just tried it. But anyways, uh, let's start off with the course. I just probably, uh, all right. So what what do we think of when the first, the first thing that comes to our mind when we say covenants? What is the first thing that comes to our mind? You know, the first thing that comes to uh, my mind uh, is, you know, if we, if most of us have stayed in a, a rented house or a leased house, right? Uh, now, when we stay there, what what happens? Okay, you meet with the owner, you you sign a lease agreement or a rental agreement. You say, okay, this is the number of years that I will be staying here. It's a twelve month contract, and uh, you know, you sign the agreement. After that, what happens? Right, nothing much happens. You pay your rent; everything's fine. Right, you there's not much of a relationship happening. Now, later on, you decide to move out of that place and go to another house, right? Uh, and so we do the same thing in the other place. Now, are we going to be in touch with our old owner? Are we going to say, hey, uh, it's, uh, you know, it was a wonderful place. Uh, I stayed there for two years. Uh, very unlikely, right? Now, the word covenant, when we say the word covenant, sometimes in our mind, we may think of legal contracts or we may think of, you know, a 12 year contract or a two year contract and we have to do certain things and only then that contract is liable but when we look at the biblical understanding of covenant it is completely different a, the biblical understanding of a covenant talks about a relationship the lord our god is a god who wants to have a relationship with us so when we say that God is a covenant God, does not mean that God has, you know, a certain set of rules, right? Okay, these these are the rules. Like in the Old Testament, you have these rules. You follow these rules. Only then you are in covenant with me. It does not mean that. What it When we read through the scriptures, we understand that the old covenant and even the new covenant, the God, the Lord God, is a God of relationship. It's not like the old owner, you know, you pay your rent, you pay your uh, dues, you pay your bills. There's no relationship. You say, okay, fine, everything's fine. You can stay. And then he calls you once a while, says, you know, don't make sound. The other neighbors are complaining. Or, or you know, the, the owner may say, you know, these are the problems that we are facing. There's no relationship. But in the new in this covenant, in the biblical understanding, God is a God of relationships, right? He is the God who has created this covenant. He is the God who wants us and encourages us to walk in the covenant. Now, when we look at the Old Testament, there are plenty of covenants, the blood covenant, uh, 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 plenty of covenants. All through the Levitical offerings, you see covenants are being made. Now, one important thing that we must understand is when God has created this covenant, this covenant is based on love, right? Why is God a covenant God? Why is God giving us these covenants? It is because God is a God of love, right? Uh, it's simple as this. If we have, you know, we have families, we have friends, or we have children, you set certain rules, you set certain guidelines. Why? It's not because, you know, uh, you want them to be afraid of you, but it's because you love them, right? The same way, when we are in covenant with God, it's not that God wants us to be, you know, uh, okay, uh, you know, in, in such a way that, you know, we should not look left or right, we should just, you know, uh, it, it's not a, a relationship of fear, but it's a relationship of love. Now, that's why many times, you know, people have asked, uh, why is God in the Old Testament, you know, so, you know, it, it looks like it's so different from the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's not. We see that in the Old Testament. It was only love. And the same thing carries on in the New Testament because it's the same God, right? So in this semester, as we talk about covenants, let's understand. Let's go to chapter one 
and we'll go to understanding covenants. The God of the Bible is a God of covenant and God is a covenant keeping God. Right? Now, this is this is something that should you know really sink into each one of us. Our God of the Bible is a God of covenant and he is a covenant keeping God. Right? Let's read Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9. Yes, could one of us please read that? Deuteronomy 7 and verse 9. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his command. Amen. Thank you. Right. So he's writing here. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations. Psalms 89 and verse 34. Uh, yes, one of us, please read it. I think I've projected it. Uh, are you able to see? Is everyone able to view? All right, go ahead. My covenant I will not break, nor after the word that has gone out of my lips. Amen. What a powerful scripture this is. God is saying, my covenant, I will not break, nor will I alter the words that come out of my lips. Right? So the word covenant refers to a serious binding agreement between two parties. Right? Now, when we looked at initially, I just shared about how, you know, if we are staying in a place you you have this owner yes you have a relationship with him but it is not a covenant relationship it's not like after you move away you know you're going to be in touch with him or there's this uh, solemn relationship happening there but here god is saying he will make a covenant in a solemn promise an unbreakable promise a commitment and an agreement which he has made for each one of us so even as we you know walk this walk of life even as we you know uh, prepare ourselves equip ourselves remember that we are fulfilling the part of the covenant that god has initiated for us right sometimes you may feel hey i'm uh, i'm in the ministry i'm i'm doing this that's wonderful but remember that we are fulfilling the covenant which god has asked us to fulfill so it is a joy. Maybe some of us are in the workplace. Uh, some of us are uh, already in the uh, you know, arts and entertainment or medical field or uh, whichever sphere of influence. God has a covenant for each one of us. And what does he say here? My covenant, I will not break. That's so powerful. And later on, we look at the different covenants. We want to make this foundation strong and say, God, you are a covenant keeping God and his covenant, he will not break. Now, the question is, what about our side of the covenant? You know, if there's a rental agreement or a lease agreement for 12 months, if we don't like the place, we tell the owner, hey, uh, no, I don't want to stay here. Please, well, I'm going to break this contract. Uh, in the next two months, uh, so kindly excuse me, and you can just break the covenant. Right? Uh, they're not the owner is not going to take you and put you into jail for breaking the covenant. No, that's not going to happen. Right? There may be a fine, but you can break the covenant. But God here is saying, you may break the covenant. I may break the covenant. But God is saying, I will not break the covenant that I have established. Right? The Hebrew word for the uh, word covenant is beret, which means to cut a covenant, which means that a covenant that is made by passing of flesh. So when we look at the Old Testament, let me just give you a little bit of uh, Old Testament reminder here. When two parties, the Old Testament, would make a covenant, what they would do is they would take the blood of the lamb or the goat or the 
calf, whatever animal it is. And they would sprinkle the blood in a sense to say that, hey, this covenant that we have made is a blood covenant. And what, is it, what does blood refer to? Blood refers to life, right? Which means even to the point of death, we are going to keep this covenant together, right? Uh, so in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, what they would do was uh, the Israelites would come and there was the sin offering, the guilt offering, the peace offering, all those offerings. And then uh, if, if two parties had decided to join together, they would make a blood covenant. And no matter what happens, you're not supposed to break the blood covenant. But if you read the Levitical uh, you know, offerings and you keep reading, if we break the blood covenant, there's a curse upon the people, the person who has broken that covenant, right? Because it's, it's bound by blood. So the word covenant in, in Hebrew is mostly talking about involvement of, of blood, which means life for the two parties. Now, the Greek word here is diatheke, uh, which is translated testament. Unfortunately, the word testament uh, does not do justice uh, to, or does not, you know, give the full weight than the word covenant, that the word that covenant gives. Uh, but we are reminded of this, that there is the old covenant, there is the new covenant. And both covenants are initiated by God. And God communicates to us through these covenants. The New Testament is a covenant. Remember what Jesus said? He took the blood and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. A new treaty. The old agreement is there. It's, it's, it, it, it's still there. But I'm giving you a new covenant where not by the blood of goats and rams, but by the blood of the sinless lamb. So even as we study this, remember that God has initiated these two covenants. You got the old covenant, you got the new covenant, both initiated by God. And he has called us to partake in this covenant. So what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity that God has given us. Uh, and so every time we go into God's word, we can understand that, hey, God is speaking to us. God is ministering to us. It is God's side of the covenant in our, that we are following, that we are obeying. Uh, every time we read the word, it's, it's, not, it's not poetry, but it is a covenant that God is speaking to each one of us. Right? And so as we understand that and as we think about that and read the scriptures, meditate on the word, the power of the word will come alive in us. So let's move on. Page six, covenant relationship. Now, the ultimate purpose for God's covenant is to have an intimate relationship. Now, God has not just put this covenant so that, you know, uh, you know, we don't run away or, you know, there's a contract. You have to stay here. It's not like God felt, okay, 400 years in Egypt. So now uh, let me make a new covenant. for No, no. The reason God made the covenant was because he wa he is, he's a God of love. He wants to have that relationship of love, an intimate relationship with us. Uh, and for us to believe him, and to be his friends. Abraham said, I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. So let's look at a few points here. God is relational. When you portray in the Bible, God is he, he's our father. He is our king. He is our leader. He is our teacher. We are his students. So there's so many different analogies that God portrays. But in all of it, we don't see God working alone. 
God is a relational God. Yeah. Uh, for example, I've been not been watching too much of it, but I, I just happened to watch a few episodes of The Chosen, and uh, and how they portray Jesus. Right? Why didn't Jesus just go about doing all this? You know, the whole thing on his own. He could have done it on his own. Maybe just two, three people have Peter, James, and John, three of them, and then finish the whole ministry. He, he did most of it. But we see that Jesus was being God. He was relational. He built relationships with people, right? Uh, he was not somebody who went and, you know, said, don't come near me. I'm God. I'm the son of God. No. He was relationship. He had relationships with people. He had 12 disciples. He knew them very well. He had friends. He had relatives. And so God is a king. God is the father. We are his children. God is the king. And we are his heirs, part partakers of his kingdom. God is a covenant God. And we are his covenant people. It's so assuring when you think of it, right? God is a covenant God. We are his covenant people. God will do his part of the covenant. We are to do our part of the covenant. Then we look at another part or another aspect of you know, covenant is a father and children. You know, God is our father. We are his children. And it also port portrays the terms of adoption we were you know paul writes to the galatians and he says you was we were in sin far away from god but through the blood of jesus we have been adopted in christ jesus we have been adopted into god's kingdom right through the blood of jesus now what was what what did jesus do he came to fulfill the old covenant right then we see here He's the king, the kingdom, and the heirs. There are, then there are kingdom descriptors that describe our relationship. We are heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. So a covenant is established. However, a relationship is developed within the, within the covenant. Right? Let me repeat that. A covenant is established, but a relationship is developed. Now, God has made a covenant with us. He said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Genesis, after Adam sinned, I'm going to make a covenant. Firstly, with Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to make you a blessing. You're going to be a blessing. You're going to be a father to many nations and, and you'll be a blessing to many nations and all of that. I'll give you an inheritance. All right. Then going on, he says, I'm going to do something more. I'm going to, as you all are living in sin, the world is living in sin. I'm going to send my son and he will make all things new. He will fulfill what I've mentioned in the old covenant. And so, God has established it. You know, we say Christ crucified before the foundation of the world. God has established that covenant. But you and I are to develop in that covenant, develop a relationship. Now, there's no point in me saying, okay, uh, God, thank you for the cross. Thank you for coming and saving me. And uh, thank you for everything. That's it. Okay, thank you. Finally, I don't have to go to hell. Somehow, I live a good life and go to heaven. You know, just scrape through and get into heaven. No. What does God desire? God desires relationship. Right? So, if I just say, okay, God, thank you, and be done with it, God is fulfilling his side of the covenant, but I'm not building a relationship with the God who created me. I'm just saying, God, thank you. Thank you, and uh, now I don't have to go to hell. That's not, that's not the whole point. God is trying to tell us that, hey, I've made a relationship. I'm a God of relationship. 
the goal of the relationship is fellowship and intimacy. And that is why we, you know, every day we wake up, every day we read the word, we pray, we seek God. Most of you have joined the course. Why? Because you want to know God. Right? Nobody's saying you have to join this course, you have to do this. It's your choice. It's because you want to build a relationship with God. God has already given the covenant. We are doing our part of the covenant. right? So never come to a place where we say, okay, God, this much is enough. No. God is willing to do more. The more we build a relationship with Him, the more He is intimate with us, the more we have fellowship with Him. I love that verse in the New Covenant. It's, it's such a powerful verse. It says, My sheep hear my voice. The Lord Jesus is saying, My sheep hear my voice. So I will speak. I will speak my side of the covenant. And if you are my sheep, you will hear the covenant. You will hear my words and you will respond to that relationship, right? A covenant relationship is, the best picture is that of a marriage. A relationship or a promise made between a man and a woman in before many witnesses. And, you know, they exchange tokens. If, if you've been in, uh, you know, those, uh, some of the traditional churches, uh, and you see the marriages, you know, the words used are very, very, you know, sometimes they use high words where they say, you know, uh, as a token of your love for each other, or they say sometimes, uh, do not annul what God has done for you. And uh, it's a powerful representation of God's relationship with us, right? Uh, and here, the covenant is was ratified, which means it was confirmed, it was enforced, it was brought into action. And, 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 and the ceremony of marriage is bringing that relationship into action. Right. So let's go, go down, right? Covenants have responsibilities. They have obligations, they have terms. Covenants have promises. They have blessings, they have provisions, they have privileges. Covenants have consequences, which means it has consequences. And when we look at these three aspects, first one, covenants have responsibilities. There are terms and obligations. Now I cannot say God, Thank you that uh, now I'm part of your kingdom. I'm your child. And I cannot keep living a life of sin. Right? I, ca I can't do that. There are terms and conditions. Right? Uh, yes, of course, God has called us. He says, be holy for I am holy. He's given us the tools and he's given us the Holy Spirit to overcome temptations to live this holy life. And so it is our responsibility. Right? Now, when we fulfill those promises, when we fulfill those responsibilities, there are certain promises. What are the promises? God blesses us. He provides for us. He grants us so many privileges. But here is another important point. Now, even when we don't, you know, do the first one, which is, you know, the responsibilities follow the terms and obligations, yet God blesses us. He provides for us. He gives us, the, you know, pro, uh, providence. He, he, he gives us certain privileges. He heals us. He does all these things. Why is that? Have we ever thought about it? No? God, I've been living, uh, I hardly pray. For example, right? Um, uh, for example, I pray five minutes for the entire week, and I'm living a sinful life. But yet, you know, I have all I need. God has provided me. You know, uh, there's no sickness in my body. Given me a good job. Given me a good family, good children. 
how is it? Sometimes we may think, no, how is it that, you know, they're all living sinful lives, but, you know, everything is fine with them. It is because God is keeping his side of the covenant. Right? God is not saying, okay, you have disobeyed me, so I will not give you anything. No. Remember what we read in Psalms, my side of the covenant I will not break. Yet, if we continue on and we allow the enemy to you know, overpower our lives, what we're doing is we're building a wall and we're saying we're not able to receive the blessings of God. The enemy blocks it. And so that's the reason why God is saying there are certain things that you have to do. The enemy comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. The enemy wants to wants us not to believe that God, you know, he wants us to believe that if we if we do wrong, we will never be blessed. Or he wants us to believe that we can, you know, uh, there is no blessings in uh, in this covenant. Or he wants us to believe that this is all a hoax, or this is all just man-made stories. He knows it's real, but he wants us to believe that it's not real. And so our side is we have certain responsibilities, responsibilities, terms and obligations that we must follow. We must obey. And when we do that, his promises, his blessings, his provisions will follow us. Thirdly, if we don't, we continue to live uh, in a life of sin. God will just let go and the enemy will overpower when the enemy comes, initially it may sound good, but there will be consequences. Covenants have a sign. For example, the Abrahamic covenant, uh, uh, it was circumcision. If you're circumcised, you're part of the Abrahamic covenant. What is the sign that you and I have in this new covenant? You and I have the Holy Spirit for us that God has given to each one of us to help us fulfill the responsibilities of our side of the covenant. For example, if you consider God's covenant to Noah and the human race, the promise was that God would never destroy the earth with a flood. What was the sign? What is a token or a memorial of that covenant? It was a rainbow. So usually when God speaks to us, he gives a sign. He gives a token. He brings things to us. You know, sometimes we may feel we are far away from God. We may say, God, I can't experience you. I feel dry in myself. We may go through those seasons. But God is a God who restores and he sign, shows signs and tokens of his covenant. Right? He may say, Paul, remember, look at this picture. Remember this. This is my covenant with you. This is my covenant with you. I just want to share this. Uh, I, I, uh, just a couple of months back, I was just going through uh, a few of my old books, uh, 2000 and. 10, 2011, uh, and in, in one of the books I had written, uh, I think it was 2012, I could be wrong, it, it, it was 2012, I had written, uh, 10 years from now, you will be, I, I will be here sharing the word, ministering the word of God. 10 years from now, 2012, I wrote down, I think it was September 2020, 2012, 10 years from now. And I had written there, uh, right, right next to it, and I said, God is a covenant God. And I saw, my, I saw that notes. And I thought to myself, it's 2022, it's 10 years now. And, and you know, God has been so faithful. We see that God has kept his side of the covenant. So like that, many times God may remind us. For Noah, it was a rainbow. We say, okay, God of mercy, he will never do this again. 
the old covenant, if you're circumcised, you're part of the Abrahamic covenant. And so even in our lives, each one of us, remember that God still speaks through his covenant. Now, God may give you a vision. He may give you a dream, a word from the scriptures that can just bring light into your heart to remind you that even though you and I may be drifting away, he is keeping his covenant. Amen. All right. Uh, any questions before I go ahead? Any thoughts? Any questions? I know I've been talking. Any thoughts? Any questions? Should we continue? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, everyone following? Is it? Am I too fast? Uh, please let me know if I'm too fast. Or uh, okay. All right. Great. So let's go on. Uh, yeah, we are. We are okay. Right, great. Okay, the cornerstones of God's covenant on page seven. Two very important cornerstones are his word and his nature. God and word and his nature go together. Right? Now, for example, if Jesus, if God says, I am the Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you. That's what is God, God's word says. So his nature goes in line with his word. And these two are the important cornerstones of God's covenant. God establishes his covenant by making a solemn promise and by giving us his word. Right? So every time we read the word of God, what are we doing? We are reading, saying, God, this is your part of the covenant. Every time I come to Jeremiah 29, 11, I have plans to prosper you, to give you a good hope and a good future. What is it? It is his part of the covenant. I have made you the head and not the tail. It's his part of the covenant. And all these wonderful scriptures, when we read, I've blessed you with every spiritual blessing. I've healed you. I've anointed you. You are a chosen generation. All these wonderful promises are his part of the covenant. It's his word. And so, as his word says, so is his nature. If God says, I'm the God who provides for you, so, so much so is his nature. He will make providence. It is, that's why when we read the word, we must understand that the word is not, you know, a whole letter or a poetry and with some good words and big words. No, it is life-giving word. It is God and it is God, God speaking to us and his nature uh, being, you know, uh, his nature coming into us. And so the two cornerstones, God's covenant, are his word and his nature. God's covenant is strong because God is a God who cannot lie. He is truth and he is absolutely faithful. He is merciful, compassionate in his nature. He's not a God who lies. Right? He's not a God who changes his mind. He's a God who is compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love. That's what he is. His word is absolutely and completely reliable. So we can rely on God's word. It is perfect. When God says that I will do this, I will take you, I will make you uh, a great nation, or I will make you uh, the head and not the tail, you will be a light to the world. You will be the salt. When God is declaring all of this, he is faithful to accomplish it in our lives. We can depend on God's word. We can rely on God's word. You know, we can, you know, sometimes in our prayer, we say, God, you said this, Lord. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're reminding God, but we're standing on his promises. We're saying, God, in your word, you have said this, that by your stripes, we are healed. And so we declare this healing. 
What are we doing? We're standing on the promise of God. We're standing on the word of God, which is completely reliable, which does not change. God is not uh, you know, changing from uh, one day to another. He's the same. And so you and I uh, can hold on to his word. He speaks his covenant. He speaks his promises through his word. That is why as believers, it's very important that we spend time in the word. Right? His word and his nature are, co are always together. And they are the two cornerstones of his covenant. In the Old Testament, we see Psalms 103 and verse 18. Yes, could one of us please read that? Psalms 103 and verse 18. Psalms 103 and verse 18. Psalm chapter 103 verse 18. Of those who are faithful to his covenant, of those who obey his commandments. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jafina. Yes. So God's covenant, he's saying here, those who are faithful, those who obey his commandments. Right. And so, and there are plenty of scriptures. You see the scriptures there, uh, Psalms 25, 10, Psalm 78, 10, Deuteronomy 7, 9. Actually, the book of Deuteronomy is packed with powerful covenants because God is reminding the people of uh, Israel, hey, you guys have turned away from me, uh, but now you're in the desert, but now you see my covenant. You see how I am. I'm keeping my covenant. I'm a God of covenant. And so uh, if you get time, go ahead and read the book of Deuteronomy. It is filled with uh, you know, covenant scriptures that we can declare upon ourselves as well. So God gave his word and then backed it up by himself. God's covenant is a relationship of love and loyalty between him and us. God gave his covenant. He backed it up by himself. He didn't say, if it doesn't happen, I will send an angel and he will make sure that it happens. No, 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 no. God is saying, I'm making this covenant and I'm backing it up by myself. I myself, my nature, my attributes is going to back up the covenant that I'm giving you. No angel, no Michael, nobody. No other people, but I will stand as that covenant. What a powerful assurance that is. Amen. That you and I, even as we read these covenants, even as we declare these covenants over our lives, we can say, God, one thing we know, that you are, are the one who is standing behind this. What you have spoken of, you are standing behind that covenant and you will fulfill it in our lives. Now, sometimes we may feel God, you know, nothing's happening as we may have planned. Sometimes life may be just going on and we think, okay, nothing's working out. I read all these, you know, blessings and prosperity and love and care and uh, healing and all of it, but nothing's really happened up to now. Am I not fulfilling my side of the covenant? Sometimes we may have these questions. We may have these thoughts. Remember that God has called us into this covenant, but he is standing, backing it up. Continue in faith. Continue uh, in steadfastness. Continue knowing that it is God who stands. So when maybe some of us are waiting for a healing, it's been maybe a couple of months or years that we haven't received it. Continue on. He does not change. His words does not change. His promise does not change. His covenant will not change. Right? So uh, let's take a break. Uh, we'll come back and we will continue. Uh, uh, let's take a break for 10 minutes and we'll be back. All right.